Okay, what's up? I'm KBHD here. So this is a, sort of a everyday carry, what's in my bag, what's on my daily driver tech type video. I've done these in the past and a lot of you kept asking, when am I gonna do another one? When am I gonna do the 2022 update version? Cause I hadn't done one in like a year. Honestly, I think most of the stuff that I'm using is very similar to the last one, but there are some small upgrades. So I'm gonna show you what those upgrades are that I personally use anyway. And I'm gonna show you what's on my devices. So this is the backpack. This is the Peak Design Everyday Carry 20 liter. So there's a 30 liter also that's pretty massive and great for travel, but this is just for everyday. I definitely fit everything I need into this backpack. I've tried other bags in the past, different shapes, different layouts. This is the one I always come back to. And as you can tell, it's a little bit different from any of the ones you'll find on their website because it's black with this red stitching. There's uh, some red stitching on the inside here. You can't get that from them. There's also an MKBHD patch at the bottom. It's the MKBHD edition of the bag that only I and some people here at the studio have. But really it's designed uh, to be a photography bag. It has zippers along the side so you can turn it sideways and open it like that if you want to. Um, it's my matte black water bottle. Stay hydrated, people. Got this as a gift for my family on Christmas. But the rest of the stuff in here is mostly just everyday carry stuff. I'm gonna start at the top. And that's the uh, back compartment. Love the way this bag is laid out. But here is the laptop of choice, which is the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. I review the thing, I've talked about it. I love it, clearly. I went with the 16 inch because for the first time, I am actually editing videos away from my desk. Like I've taken this home, edited videos on a couch, at a table, just random other places, which is crazy. Uh, the 14 inch screen, it's a great laptop, it's just a little too small. So this is the, the laptop I've actually edited videos on. So then the backpack up top here has a bunch of other small uh, pockets. Got a microfiber in here. And I just realized I also still have from last time the uh, SD card reader, but since this, ha it's a, I don't, don't need that. Uh, but that's it for the top. So then there's this buckle at the top that lets you get into the top section. There's three sections. So up top is the stuff I use the most. MagSafe charger for the laptop, of course. And these are the headphones that I've traveled a lot with. So anytime I travel, I typically need noise canceling and wireless. That's the ideal go-to. And so AirPods Max pair with the whole ecosystem of Apple products, of course and they're in space gray. So then I also have my car keys and other keys, which have air tags on them. And then two more things, uh, the body cap for the Canon R5, which is a bit of a spoiler alert to what's in the bag. And then uh, this is a webcam. This is called the Opal C1. Uh, disclaimer, I'm an investor in this company and I've been checking this out for a little while now, but I really believe in it. And this is just a webcam that they've made for the amount of video calls that were on lately, I tend to get a lot of use out of that thing. So that's in my backpack and that's it. Now I'm gonna go bottom section. This is what you do in a photographer bag, ready? Just like that. And then you can get it in the side. So as a photographer bag, you've got photographer things. I don't always carry this with me, but when I do carry a camera on the go, I typically will take Canon's R5 I also traveled with this exact same bag when I went to shoot that Mr. Beast video or for a couple other shoots where I know I'm doing a lot of videos, I've taken the Sony A1. But for everyday stuff where I like take a lot of photos, Canon R5 with the 15 to 35 is my go-to. A lot of first person shots with wide angle stuff. And then last but not least at the bottom here, there's a bunch of uh, like charging related stuff spread out the rest of this backpack. So I've got two cables. One is my USB-C to lightning cable. And then the other is actually, this is super cool that I just found recently. This is a USB-C cable and there's a little display on the end of the cable. And when you plug something in that starts drawing power, this display lights up with the exact wattage that that thing is drawing. So it's kind of a nice little indicator of how much power you're getting out of your wall brick, which is pretty cool. Didn't think I would care that much about that sort of thing, but I like it a lot. Then this is the wall brick for USB-C. But that's just, this is just like the classic one that's built in that Apple will give you. I have over here in this pocket, 
a slim one. This is made by Realme. I don't even know if they sell it. I'll try to link everything below that is on sale if you wanna pick up any of this stuff. But it's a, it's a dart charger and I think it's about 50 watts and uh, it's a slim charger. So you can just plug it into the wall just like that, USB-C at the bottom. And so anytime I'm traveling at a hotel or any place, I just need to plug something in. Boom, boom, charged. Otherwise over here, I've got my Apple Watch charger and this is the sad part that they haven't made a new version of MagSafe Duo that supports the Apple Watch Series 7's faster charging. So sadly, I also carry the, uh, the faster metal puck charger if I actually need it to charge faster. This is all nerdy stuff. It probably doesn't matter for most people, but Apple Watch chargers. Then on the other side, uh, just some pens. I typically don't write things with pens very often, but if I need to sign something or write a check or whatever, that's easy. And then down here, uh, yes, my adapter, my lightning to headphone jack adapter that I still have. But that's it. That's it for the bag, it's empty. And that's all I really typically ever carry. Again, like I said, camera is in there sometimes, isn't there other times, everything else is always in the bag. But I've got pockets too. Let's do the pockets. Okay, three pockets actually. So as far as everyday carry is concerned, I do have a back pocket and that's where I keep my wallet, which is this little guy. Pretty simple, it is a Trove wallet. So I'll, I'll link this below, although this is again an MKBHD carbon blacked out edition, which is pretty sick. Although the whole uh, right side up thing, I feel like this is right side up, but all the text has this being right side up, map like everything. Anyway, but inside it, I don't carry much. I clearly don't carry a lot in my wallet. I don't have cash, but this is a uh, D-Brand skinned key card to get into the studio. Very useful to have. And then this is just a little backup key uh, to get into the car, which actually uses the phone and a Bluetooth signal as the key. So in case my phone's dead or something like that, or it's bugging out, which that happens sometimes too. So that's the wallet. And then, two daily driver smartphones. I've told this story before, but I pretty much always carry an Android phone and an iPhone, one in each pocket. It's always the Android phone on the right side and the iPhone on the left side. And that's just because I'm always in both worlds, both ecosystems, I'm always testing both things. Now the iPhone has the most continuity because it only changes once or twice a year when I'm testing the new iPhones, but I'm carrying an iPhone 13 Pro, not the Pro Max actually. I downsized, so this is the one terabyte space gray version though. I found that with the amount of ProRes video that I shoot on this thing, it helps. I shot the whole Rivian video on this phone. So I'll go over the setup on the iPhone in a second, but I'm gonna start with the Android phone, which at the moment is the Pixel 6 Pro. It's been a couple months now. This phone, it's fine, but it's definitely getting more buggy than when it started, which is really odd and annoying. So. I don't know, this has happened with Pixels before, but as I fire it up, this is the, the setup that uh, you're probably so used to seeing. I've had this wallpaper for a while. I've had roughly this setup on the phones for a while, but I'm gonna give some shout outs to some of my favorite things I'm doing on the phone. So it's got the weather wedgie in the middle. That's cool. It seems to really want to go to 60 Hertz all the time, even though I have, let's see, I have 120 Hertz turned on. Yep, still on, which is kind of annoying, but the apps are, phone, messaging, Tesla, Flamingo. I have the Flamingo for Twitter app still on my Android phones because it's a Twitter app that I really like that ran out of tokens and is only available to sign in for people who already have a token on their Twitter account. So most people don't use Flamingo for Twitter. I use the regular Twitter app for notifications, but I use Flamingo just because it's clean and looks great for scrolling around and just reading tweets. Then I have my favorite app, I think of the entire year, which is my to-do app. It's called Tick Tick. And I feel like these really good to-do apps don't get enough credit. I mean, I, I'm doing a lot of things. I'm trying to keep track of a lot of different simultaneous and parallel projects and having a single place to put all that information is super helpful for me. So I have it all divided and organized in here and I've tried pretty much every to-do list app that's out. Um, and I found Tick Tick 
is the best. At least it's my favorite. I really like it. The UI is great. The features are great. It also has a focus planner. It has a Pomodoro timer. It's got a whole bunch of extra stuff you might find useful. Definitely check out TickTick. Tick. And then above that, I have a bunch of my most recently used or frequently used apps. Relay Pro for Reddit. You can get any number of different Reddit apps, but I've just gotten really used to Relay Pro, which is great. Instagram, Spotify, YouTube Studio app, and then four of my most used Google apps, which are YouTube, Google Drive, the Gmail stock app, I think is good, and Google Photos. Uh, then over here, I've got a calendar widget. I'm going to try to link that one because it's really good. Waze for navigation. It's not pretty, but it's very functional. Uh, Yahoo Fantasy and Pocket Cast is my pocket podcast app of choice. Then Google Keep for just remembering, jotting down random notes and stuff like that, and Slack, which we use here at the studio. And then I just have like a miscellaneous fitness page over here. Tempo, if you've heard of the Tempo like home gym, uh, that's the app that lets you plan things with it, and Google Fit. But that's basically the most used stuff on my Android phone. I mean, here's the entire app list. Nothing too dramatic. I don't have actually that many apps. And a lot of these like annoying apps like my Fios or my at and I wish I didn't have to have those apps, but they tend to be like the most useful way to interact with these services. So I have them. But yeah, that's, that's the world of my Android phone at the moment. This phone will probably change in a week or two. I don't stick with one Android phone usually for more than about a month because I'm constantly actually using and putting my SIM card into the next phone I'm testing. But the phone that stays constant in the left pocket, at least with only maybe one or two changes a year, is the iPhone. And so this is my iPhone setup. A lot of overlap because I use a lot of the same services. But in the iPhone world, there's a lot of stuff like uh, the Copilot app, which is a finance tracking app that I love and use on the iPhone. Um, the iPhone camera app, of course. I've got a TickTick -tick widget up here and a TickTick -tick shortcut at the bottom because I think it's great. Um, but also things like Instagram, Dark Sky. God, I hate that they took Dark Sky away from Android. Apple bought the Dark Sky app, and now the best weather app in the world is iPhone only, sadly. But it's really good. So I keep that here, and I use it a lot. Tweetbot for Twitter, the Twitter app, or the, the Tesla app for opening and closing the car door, things like that. Um, we have to use a third-party app for group fitness challenges at the studio. So the challenges app does exactly that. Hopefully someday Apple can build that in so anyone with an Apple Watch can join a group competition. That'd be cool. Yeah, weather widget, nothing too crazy here. And then this is uh, that app library screen. I do have Among Us on my phone. I have this app, what's this called again? Hemisphere, probably my favorite game. It's really good for just burning time on the plane where basically you start off as this orb and you go around and you basically just try to absorb every orb that's smaller than you. Pretty classic. Uh, just become the biggest. Eject, move over, move over. You get the idea. It's really addicting though. I've gotten a lot of hours sunken into this app. Um, but yeah, the Chipotle app, good stuff. Uh, the Google Home app, no surprises there. And that's what's on my two phones that I'm carrying with me on this exact date in January of 2022. So yeah, that's pretty much it. You guys asked for it, so now you have it. Maybe leave any suggestions you guys have for good apps or good widgets or things that I'm missing out on. I love TickTick. Tick. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna link as many of the things I talked about in this video as possible below so you can see them. But if anything else is uh, deserving to be on my radar, let me know. Okay. That's it. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Peace.